Hi. So uh, we all have our secret passions, right? Mine uh, as a kid was math. Um, I never understood why kids, other kids hated it so much at school. I, for me, it was so much fun. And uh, another thing I really liked was creating stuff, whether in dance, music, or writing. And I always hoped to find something that will combine them. And maybe my most secret passion that people don't know is magic. I really like magic tricks, and I watched hundreds of videos of famous, famous magicians like uh, David Blaine or Leonard Green. And I even learned some card tricks like making a card disappear. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. It's really stupid. Quite useless. But I was always fascinated uh, by knowing how the trick is done behind the scenes. And I was always obsessed about it. So I'm going to talk uh, with you about SVG filters, which is something that combines all of my secret passions. And I think it's the closest thing to magic uh, that you can find on the web. Because you see, uh, the video that you've been watching, it's not a regular video. There's something, something special about it. In fact, what you've been looking at <laughs> is a green screen filter. Wait. So this is me with a lot of hungry dinosaurs in the back. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, my lovely assistant. <laughs> um, so what are SVG filters? They are a low level a mathematical primitives for image manipulation. Each one individually is completely useless. But if you combine them together with the right parameters, you can create really cool effects. And I'm going to show a sample. So the green screen filter is just one of these effects. And as you probably guessed, we'll see later how all of this magic is, the trick is done. And so, and really the possibilities are endless. I'm just going to show you a few that I created. So this is kind of like a frosted glass filter. Um, we have an infrared filter, which looks kind of spooky. Uh, this looks like water drops on the camera. So SVG filters, the one cool thing about, it, about them is that you create them, and then you can apply them to every element you want. So for example, text, uh, image, spooky cat, video. And of course, the webcam. Um, and one more thing, because they are just uh, SVG markup elements, you can really easily animate them. So for example, making the drops drop, or this really cool melting effect. And as you can see, everything is super performant. It's real time because it runs on the GPU, which means that it runs all, the, all of the pixel calculations uh, in parallel. And really, the possibilities are endless. So here, for example, it's just a sharpening effect. And the pencil effect, take on me. Pixelation. Cool. So let's dive into the code. We like to see code, right? Um, so let's look, for example, at the frosted glass effect and see how it is uh, written. So the first thing to notice is that there's no JavaScript, right? There's no image processing libraries. It's just three elements inside a filter element. It's just SVG. So uh, there are around 20 or so filters. We're not going to show all of them, just a sample. And let's see how it works. So let's just comment out uh, these two. And now we can see just the first filter. So filters work as a pipeline. So the output of the one filter goes as an input to the next filter, and you combine them. You can also combine them in different ways. So the turbulence filter uh, just creates random noise. And it has some parameters. So for example, you can zoom into the uh, pattern, or you can zoom out of the pattern, um, just to create whatever pattern you want. 
and okay, what this looks completely useless, but when you combine it with another filter called displacement map, then you actually use the first pattern to do something called displacement on the source graphic. So what is displacement? It's a, a function that maps between the source uh, image and the target image by moving pixels either on the x-axis or the y-axis or both. How does it know how much to move each pixel? Just according to the displacement map. So it's using the red uh, channel as the x uh, displacement and the green channel as the y displacement. And it's all really simple math. So a, a pixel is just RGBA values, right? Between 0 and 255. So for example, if the red is 255, uh, the pixel will move a lot to the right. And if it's 0, it will move a lot to the left. And if it's 127, it will stay in place. And everything in between, it will just move less or more. So it's a really simple uh, math, math equation. Um, but it's still not the effect that we had with the frosted glass, right? It's much more smooth. So let's see another filter here that's called component transfer. So component transfer is also a mapping function between the source image and the target image, but it doesn't move the pixels around it. They stay in place. It uh, changes the value of the pixel. So the pixel stays in place, but we can run a function to change the value. Uh, so as we said before, the value of the, of the pixel is RGB and A. A is alpha. And this runs a function on, on each pixel, and the values are here are not between 0 and 255, they're between 0 and 1. So it basically, it runs the discrete function on the red channel and says, okay, every, uh, va every red value will be either exactly 0, exactly 0 0.6, or is it exactly one? So if it's 0 0.9, it will be one. If it's 0 0.7, it will be 0 0.6. So it's kind of like snapping the values to discrete values. And that's why we get this more rough effect. There are no smooth transitions. Um, cool, so now you know how it works. But if you just read the documentation of SVG filters, you would have no idea that you can combine them this, this way. And also when I did these effects, it's not like I, I said, okay, I want a frosted glass effect, I know I need a turbulence, and then a component transfer with 0, 0 0.6, and that. I just played around with the numbers and the filters until I, I started seeing something that makes sense, which, which is why I love them so much, because it's a really different uh, programming mindset. It's not like, okay, I write this code, I know how it, what will be the end result. There's a lot of uh, trial and error and a lot of creativity. And you won't get it from the documentation. You will get it from exploring the web and uh, looking at uh, different examples. Um, cool, let's look at another one, which is the infrared filter. And here, first of all, you see the first parts are, you already know it, right? Turbulence and component transfer, displacement map. And then we add a couple of more. So let's also comment out these. So the first one is the turbulence, but this time we gave it a different value for x and y. That's why the pattern is like very thin lines. And if we apply the displacement map here, then as you can see, it just creates these very uh, thin interruptions in the image. And what we do here as well is we blend the turbulence with the image. So First, we use the turbulence to move the pixels around, and now we actually combine the, the colors of the turbulence inside. Um, so now it's very dark. Uh, that's why I introduced another filter, which is the, it's again the component transfer, but we're passing a different function. We're passing a linear function uh, with a slope. So it basically just says on the alpha channel. So basically, if Let's look at the result of the turbulence. So you can see it just, this is just opacity 0 0.4, basically. That's what it does. And so it just takes the alpha value and multiplies, multiplies it by 0 0.4. Um, okay, so now we get a blended image. 
And the final one creates the matrix, the infrared effect. And this is using, using the color matrix, which is also a very powerful uh, filter, like displacement map. But again, it doesn't move the, the pixels. It, change, it runs a, a function on the colors, on the values. So it multiplies the matrix by each pixel, which sounds, oh, I need to start uh, learning computer science in the university to understand what it means. But actually, you don't. It's a very simple formula. So this is a matrix of numbers. And each one determines what will be the value of the target uh, channel of the, of the target pixel. So this is the formula for the target red, green, blue, and alpha. So each of these lines is a formula that determines the target channel. And how is it determining it? It's just the first coefficient, one, times the input red, plus one times the input green, plus one times blue, plus zero times alpha, plus zero. So it's, it's just a linear function, right? It's the source, this, are the coefficients of the source pix, uh, channel, and then we get the target pixel channel. So one times red, plus one times green, plus one times blue, plus zero times alpha, plus zero. So let's see why uh, this creates the, the, red, uh, the infrared effect. So as you can see, the red just takes the values of the source pixel red, green, or blue. So if it's, a, if it's blue, it will turn red. If it's red, it will turn red. If it's green, it will turn green, and it will keep the same level of intensity. So if it's a bright pixel, it will be a bright red. If it's, uh, you get the point. And there's no green uh, in the result pixel, and there's no blue, because it's just zeros. And the alpha stays the same. So what do you think will happen if I switch the first row with the second row? will have an infra-green effect, or blue. Right, and you, again, you can just play around with the numbers. If you add a constant here, then everything is brighter. If you do a minus, then it's darker. Cool, so now that you know you're already an expert in SVG filters, right? I'm going to show you a mystery filter and walk you through it and see if you guess what it does. So, first of all, you see we have two filters that you know already, right? Color matrix and component transfer. So the first one takes the red and just keeps it the same, right? So red equals one times red. And green equals one times green. And blue equals one times blue. So we don't change the pixel at all. The only thing we change is the alpha channel. So we take the green, sorry, the red, multiply it by uh, the alpha, sorry, by five, the, red, the, the green multiply it by minus 10, and the blue by five, and then we add one. And then we get the result alpha. So alpha is the transparency of the pixel. Anybody already has a guess? So, and let's ignore this. So let's take, for example, a white pixel. What will happen with white? With white, everything is one. So five times one, minus 10 times one, minus, plus five times one, plus one, it will get one. And if we take black, everything is zero. So we, we will all, all also get one. But what if we take green, for example? So uh, like a perfect green without any components of red and blue. So five times zero because there's no red, minus 10 times green, so it's a, high, it's a very low number, minus, plus five times blue, which is zero, plus one. So we'll get a very negative value, which means that the alpha will be negative, but it, it always uh, uh, compacts to uh, between zero and one. So if it's minus five, it will be zero. So maybe some of you already guessed, this is the green screen filter effect. So it just takes the green pixels 
and uh, makes them transparent. And also I have like another video tag behind the webcam. So every pixel that's transparent, you actually see um, the video behind me. So again, here it's green. So if we get green pixels, they're just transparent. Oh, it's the interesting, interesting part. <laughs> I wonder what happens. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. It's a trivia card for kids. It's also interesting. Arnavonim hem. Okay. Um, so why did, how did they get to these numbers? So for example, uh, why not just take the, the minus 10 and multiply it by green and that's it, right? Let's see what happens. Now there are a lot of false positives or a lot of pixels are, are green. Why? Because there's green everywhere, right? White has a, a, a large component of green. So we don't want just pixels with green, we want pixels where the green uh, is much more than the other, pix other pixels. So we need to do this kind of battle between uh, green and the other ones. Now what happened if this was zero? Again, we get false positives because, for example, now uh, black will be zero or white will be zero because this, this sum up to, um, to zero. So we want to start with one and say, everything is opaque, no transparency. Um, just if there's, there's a lot of green and uh, uh, a few uh, red and blue, then it will be transparent. And finally, we get run the discrete function to say, okay, we don't want any, anything between zero and one. So if I put this, I don't know if now it's not visible, but it's, uh, yeah, I guess everything here is not, it's very not green. But um, what you want is to have discrete, so either zero or one. And this just means that we prefer one. So if it's 0 0.3, it will be one. So we're giving more weight on the one. Um, cool. So uh, now you're experts in SVG filters. Uh, you can do it. I actually heard from Elad that he actually needed to use SVG filters in work. We actually also used it in cover. Uh, that's how uh, we discovered it. Uh, it's, been, it's been around for a while, for, for a few years. It's supported in almost all, uh, in all the uh, uh, modern browsers with some tweaks. And I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Uh, but also I hope that you, like me, are now realize the satisfaction of, of watching a magic trick done behind the scenes. Because... <laughs> Because first of all, you see how simple it is. And second, now you know that you, you, you can accomplish something that a few seconds ago seemed impossible. Thank you. <laughs>